and what happened? Turns out that you're not a victim of a hate crime. You're not a victim of a racial hate crime. You're not a victim of a homophobic hate crime. You're just a charlatan pretending to be a victim of a hate crime. And that's shameful, especially from the family you got brought up with, with your family values. A few moments later. All right. Any other matters to come before the court today? Right. Defendants from Matthew, the custody sheriff, or I am not suicidal. I am not suicidal. And I am innocent. I could have said that I was guilty a long time ago. All right, guys, so we got to talk about some good news, some positive news involving woke, washed up actor Juicy Smollett, who staged a hate crime against himself, okay, in which he paid two African guys to beat him up in the middle of Chicago after getting a Subway sandwich past midnight. They took our beautiful bench. <laughs> this is where we waited for Jussie to come before we attacked them. So we got here with 10 minutes to spare, and we had to plan our escape route to survey the land. His building is actually right here, right above the stairs that we're going to attack him at. We made sure we got there at 2 a.m. sharp. On the dot. On the dot. We had no phones because he did not want us to bring any phones. He said, so we don't lose them. I don't know if that's really the reason, but you can deduce your own reason. So 2 a.m., he was nowhere to be found. He was not there. So we were like, damn, what do we do? We didn't have no way of contacting him. He had no way of contacting us. So we waited here for about, what, four, four minutes? It was about four, four, minutes, four minutes, but it felt like forever. Because it was cold as balls. So I saw him out the corner of my eye, and I was like, OK, that's him. Let's go. As we crossed the street, we said, hey, to get his attention, turned around, looked at us. And that's when we started yelling uh, the famous slurs he wanted us to yell. It's MAGA country. Yeah. And then he said, what did you say to me? And then that's when I threw the first punch at him. I held the blow, because I didn't want to hurt him, of course. So I made it look real, but I held it. Then we started tussling, moving, moving around, and then I threw him to the ground. He wanted it to look like he fought back. That was very important for him, because he said, hey, don't just beat my ass. Make it look like I'm fighting back and whatnot. So we did that, and then I threw him to the ground. And while after I threw him to the ground, I, he had no bruise. I wanted it to look more real. So then I threw him to the ground. After I threw him to the ground, I used my knuckle and gave him a noogie. So I went like this. Now, the story behind Juicy Smollett and these African men, these Nigerian men that he hired to beat him up, okay, um, is hilarious to me, okay? Apparently... Uh, he was in a sexual relationship with at least one of them, okay, allegedly. He was getting his cheeks clapped. I think that he was getting his cheeks clapped by both of them, right? I think that this is a love story going wrong, okay? I personally believe there's a lot more to this than, you know, what, you know, we're being told, okay? Allegedly, they used to hotbox together <laughs> and ride around and do all types of crazy stuff together, okay? There's a long story okay a long and hard story behind what what is that right i think that you know there's a lot more to this okay but regardless he hired these um these uh nigerian uh guys uh to be white maga hat wearing white supremacists right maga hat wearing white supremacists beat up juicy smolay in the middle of Chicago. And Kanye West was nowhere to be found at the time of this alleged attack. So of course, this was an unbelievable story, right? Completely unbelievable. That was believed by too many people in this country at the time in which Juicy Smollett alleged that it happened, okay? But people quickly discovered that he was making it all up, okay? That he staged this hate crime against himself. And after everybody found out that the jig was up, that there were no MAGA hat wearing white supremacists that beat him up, he basically claimed that the Nigerian brothers uh, are the ones that beat him up and that they beat him up on purpose, right? That it wasn't something that he paid for. They just beat him up because it was a homophobic attack. Even though these guys 
have been pictured at a pride parade, right? So these guys, again, um, you know, they are into the same thing that Juicy's into, okay? But again, apparently, you know, they're homophobic, even though they've been pictured at pride parades. They seem to be into, you know, the same lifestyle that Juicy's into, okay? They like clapping cheeks and getting their cheeks clapped too, right? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Um, again, fascinating stuff, right? The homophobic gay guys, right? Again, this is... Typical leftist behavior, leftist <laughs> accusations, okay, when they get caught up in their lies, right? This is kind of how it, it goes. It kind of reminds me of the um, the black white supremacists, right? <laughs> that label, label. But ultimately, he lied to the world. He lied to the police about this attack. And eventually, he was found guilty of such and sentenced to jail. <laughs> Step over. 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 Step Mr. Smollett, we're the ERT team, emergency response team. We handle all the high profile guys. We had R. Kelly when he was here. You're in, you're in safe hands with the whole situation. A highly professional group of guys there. Appreciate that. And then here's, uh, looks like extra large pants. And also an extra large shirt. Yeah, so Juicy, who is a Holly weird actor, was unfortunately released from jail just a week after his sentence because he was kicking and screaming and crying in jail about how it wasn't safe, okay? This man was allegedly having uh, psychiatric uh, meltdowns in prison, okay? And you had a bunch of woke activists uh, calling in in his defense, claiming that there was racism and bigotry and homophobia going on in regards to Juicy uh, facing accountability, right? <laughs> facing justice, right? Having to serve a jail sentence, okay? It was no way, no way that Juicy uh, should be held responsible for his actions. And the arguments that they made in regards to why he shouldn't serve any type of punishment for his actions is because he has infinity stones of wokeness, right? Which, you know, again, Juicy represents, in my opinion, the stereotypical Democrat, right? He really does. Somebody who claims that because they're a victim, okay, because of their skin color, because of who they like to sleep with, uh, because of whether or not they actually like their genitalia, uh, yeah, they're a victim, right? And they should face no accountability and no punishment for their actions. But again, because we live in a society that um, capitulates to this type of boohoo, wanting, and crime victimhood, he was ultimately released on appeal, okay? And um, the good news is that that appeal has been denied and he's going back to jail and he's gonna have to serve out his jail sentence that in my opinion, I think is way too lenient. So let's read about this because again, his conviction has been upheld by a Illinois appeals court. I want you guys to notice the sticklers in the comment section that always make fun of how I pronounce words and names. I said Illinois, not Illinois. Right? So I'm listening, okay? I'm trying to get better, okay? An Illinois appeals court upheld actor Juicy Smollett's conviction for a stage hate crime in an opinion filed Friday, the decision was to one with Justice David Navarro and Justice Mary Ellen uh, Coghallan agreeing. Judge Fredrina uh, Lyle dissented according to court documents obtained by Fox News Digital. Smule's uh, legal team will file an appeal with the <laughs> Supreme Court. Okay, so this guy is just going to keep appealing, right? A six months jail sentence. All he got to do is just sit in jail for six months. Again, he has infinity stones of wokeness. They're not really going to let anything happen to him. But then again, the Cook County uh, Jail is one of the worst jails in America. So I kind of understand why he doesn't want to be there, right? But he's going to get special treatment, okay? 
Uh, because he's a woke actor, uh, you know, Lord forbid anything happened to him. They're not going to let anything happen to him. They're not going to let him get Derek Chauvin, okay, because he has a Finney Stones of Wokeness. But again, this is a Chicago jail, right? So, you know, I mean, I got to get it, right? I wouldn't want to spend much time in Chicago jail either, okay? So I understand why he's doing it. Uh, I just think that um, it's just not going to be successful because he's clearly and obviously guilty. Quote, we wish to highlight that the decision was divided with Justice Lau offering a detailed analysis in favor of Smollett. His rep, Holly uh, Bird, told Fox News Digital, we are preparing to escalate this matter to the Supreme Court armed with a substantial body of evidence, a.k.a. woke arguments. Well, because, you know, Juicy Smollett has infinity stones of wokeness. Therefore, he shouldn't face any responsibilities for his actions, right? That's the gist of the argument here, right? I believe, okay? Special Prosecutor Dan K. Webb shared a statement following the appellate court's decision to uphold the conviction. Quote, as the appellate court noted, Mr. Smollett challenged virtually every aspect of the prosecution and the appellate court correctly rejected each and every one of those challenges. Webb said, today's decision is a validation of Winston Strom's um, tireless work on this matter and a resounding victory for justice. We are proud to have prevailed in a case that we believe can help restore the public's confidence in the Cook County justice system. A jury previously found Smollett guilty on five of the six charges of disorderly conduct after a nearly two week trial in 2021. Smollett, who is black and gay, reported to Chicago police that he was a victim of a racist and homophobic attack by two men wearing ski masks in January 2019. The manhunt for the attacker soon turned into an investigation of Smollett and his subsequent arrest on charges. He orchestrated the attack and lied to police about it. Uh, Smollett was sentenced to 150 days in jail following the conviction. The actor was also sentenced to 30 months felony probation, restitution to the city of Chicago in the amount of $120,106 and a fine of $25,000. During the sentencing hearing, Smollett maintained his innocence. Quote, I did not do this and I am not uh, suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go there, I did not do it to myself. You must know that Smollett Said. Now, Juicy is not going to go back to jail immediately. He has to appeal with the Supreme Court, and it's probably going to be another year, right? So he's probably going to be out for a whole nother year. And then if the Supreme Court hears his appeal and they uphold his sentence, then he will go to jail. So he's probably not realistically going to go to jail until, like, I don't know, 2025, which is crazy to think about, right? Um, I mean, he's really working the system. Um, but I do think he will eventually go to jail, right? But, you know, it could be a minute before he actually really goes to jail. Now, if they deny his, um, his appeal, then he will go to jail, but it's going to take some time before they actually deny it or choose to hear it. And then, you know, go through that process. So he's not going back to jail directly or right now. I think eventually he will have to serve the time. Yeah. So again, we all know, uh, what happened with Smollett. He went to jail. He filed an appeal. Okay, they're going to keep appealing. Um, they're trying to keep this man out of jail no matter what. <laughs> but I think that Juicy just, just, should just give up and he should just go ahead and serve out his jail sentence, right? I think personally that considering what he did, considering the division and hate that this man caused in this country, because, you know, what he did basically uh, smeared Trump supporters as racist and homophobic, right? And this is something that the mainstream liberal media went with. They were already trying to drum up that narrative that, you know, Trump supporters are, you know, a danger to, you know, so-called minorities and gay people and transgender people and whatever, right? This is a narrative that they were already trying to push. This guy took advantage of that and tried to uh, gain fame and clout off of it, off of fake hate crime. And again, he divided the country. And when you do something like this, I think that you should be thoroughly punished. I actually think that six months is not enough, right? I think that he should be serving at least three to four to five years, right? He should be serving hard time. He should be in prison, not just a local county jail. He needs to be in prison, okay? A state prison, locked up, serving a hard time, breaking big rocks into little rocks. That's exactly what this man should be 
doing. So again, he's lucky that he's only getting five to six months and he's kicking and screaming and boo hoo whining and crying about it. But, you know, at the end of the day, he's clearly guilty. He's obviously faked a hate crime against himself. And I don't know why this guy keeps keeps saying that he's innocent. Maybe he, in his head, he believes that he's innocent, right? Maybe in his head, he believes that because he has Infinity Stones of Wokeness, that, um, you know, he's allowed to fake a hate crime against himself. That is not really a hate crime or is not really, you know, faking a hate crime uh, because, again, he has Infinity Stones of Wokeness. Therefore, he's resolved of all of any type of responsibility or accountability for his actions. I mean, again, that is the stereotypical mindset of a woke liberal, okay? So, again, it, it doesn't surprise me that he doesn't want to take accountability or responsibility, but I think he just needs to own up to it at this point and just accept the fact that he's going to have to do his little five or six months and move on with his life, right? As long as he keeps dragging this out, the more people like me are going to talk about it, the more we're going to keep you know, laughing at him and making fun at the fact that he continues to drag this out, even though he's obviously guilty. But hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.